What's happening, comic guys, women, children, whatever you want to call it. It's Thursday night. I'm back, Charlie, aka Geeky Eye Comics, and I'm with one of the best guys in the business, Andy, aka Mr. Perpetual Comics. What's happening, mate? What is happening? Um, I was, first of all, surprised <laughs> that uh, you remembered to come off mute. And second of all, was only two of us. Where, where's... Where's, where's the big man? Tom decided to go on a call at eight o'clock uh, and he said he should be joining us anytime soon. This is what happens when one of your co-hosts is a uh, is a bodybuilder packing guns like he does and people just want to work out to be like him. So he's, he's doing goodness while we're sitting here talking comics. But it's, uh, it's all good, mate. It's all good. He'll be here. He'll be here. Um, thanks to everybody who's already in the chat and who's watching, hopefully. You'll enjoy the show. Uh, I know that we've got a few surprises tonight, and uh, I know you've been working hard on your uh, creator content slides. I've had a sneak peek at them. Yeah, so I have. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this creator, this showcase. Uh, last week's one was wicked. I enjoyed that one. Uh, unfortunately, I was able to uh, unable to attend the show, so I had to watch it while uh, while on the train. Um, I only tuned in to see if I won cover of the week, but no. So it was a short visit then. It was literally in and out. <laughs> In and out, basically, yes. But hey ho. But uh, here's what it is. Maybe I'll yes. win this week. Who knows? <laughs> oh, you won. I doubt it. But anyway, the the, the chat is is buzzing. Phil's Treehouse, a killer show about comics. That killer. Count me in. Welcome, sir. We've got Mister Bat Dan Dixon. It's going to be a big night tonight. Is that what you're telling your wife? Easy, easy. Chris Bell, ding dong. Tough decision tonight, but I like a guaranteed lack of prizes. So I'm here for you, boys. Thank you very much. And we have the one and only Ed Vic calling from Prisoner Cell Block. Ed, evening all. Happy Thursday. So Andy. It's, uh, it's another Charlie. week, isn't it? It's another week. Um, it's been a good week for comics in, in my eyes, but w- people are only here to see me lose. So I might as well just just play Stop. an intro and we can get going. Lose. Press the button. Did it work? It was a, listen, if that if that was a little bit technical difficulties, I think your laptop had a look at your cover and basically said, no, sorry, we can't do this to you, Charlie. Do you know what? My laptop's dying. It's about seven years old. So, And I think the fact that the lack of comic cover wins that I've had, I, th- I think it's just going to give up. Listen, we might, we might not be giving anything away in this show. But if anybody wants to give away a laptop or sponsor a laptop for Charlie, then just uh, you know, get in touch. Please do. Touch. Please do. But obviously, as we go on, this is it. It's another Killer Covers uh, episode. And this is July the 19th, which was new comic book day yesterday. I don't even know why I enter this race anymore, because it's clearly a two-headed race. And I'm just trailing behind, picking up the cones. But up first is Tom. He's not here, unfortunately, at the moment. He will be joining us soon. But he has gone for Batman White Knight Presents Generation Joker, issue number three which is the 1 in 25 Dan Panacin variant cover. I thought it was quite ironic that he picked this cover for this week because he picked this before I even told you guys who I was uh, doing as the creative showcase. But what is there not to love about this cover? It was like two minds coming together in beautiful harmony or something like that. Uh, yes, uh, uh, this this is a comic uh, series that I've been stacking. Love, love... Uh, Sean Murphy verse. I love the White Knight. Um, and also, we love Dan Panacean. Uh, Dan the man. Big man. Dan man. Who is currently at SDCC uh, at the minute. Um, so, yeah. I think this cover... Cool. I like it. Uh, yeah. I'm not a big wrestling fan. But I get it. Uh, and I know why people will, uh, will, 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 will buy it. But it's a one in twenty-five. Mm. Mm, it's going to cost you a little bit to get this. Um, yeah. There's nothing like overlay, like there's no foil bits to it. You know that seems to be the the thing these days. But yeah, yeah, um, it's a decent pick by by the big man. I do like it, and it, yeah, I think it touches on like wrestling, which I'm massively into, Batman, which I'm massively into, and Sean Murphy, which I'm massively into. So yeah, uh, win, win, win on all three uh, places. Chris Bell, if you win this week, I'll buy you one. 
There you go. Look, if I win this week, he's going to buy me a laptop. Hopefully, this was. It was a great read, GP. Yeah, see, I'm reading this. I've been. I'm up to. I'm up to scratching this, and I'm absolutely loving it. Evening, fuzzy. Let's go, fellas. Uh, and then we've got hope, everyone as well. Yes, we are all well, and thank you very much for joining. So yes, as mentioned, this is Tom's cover of the week from DC Black Label. Up next, oh, there we go. There was a bit of confusion about this. I just have to say it to begin with. On League of Comic Book Geeks, it said this was a 1 in 25 Tom Riley variant cover. Now, well, League of Comic Geeks is very much wrong, aren't they? <laughs> totally wrong. So, uh, well done to Batman Dixon for pointing that out on the, on the uh, Instagram and making us look like a dickhead, but it's okay. Yeah, it's, this, uh, cheers, mate. this is very much a Sosa Mica. You can. Uh, Sorry, I could tell this was a source of mic. I'm sorry. Um, I was I was I was very quick on this one. Oh, that sounded wrong. Um, because I sent it to you guys uh in the chat and said, Look, well, look at this comic because I know that you're a Harley fan. Um and I I think this is a stunning cover. I think it is fantastic. It is a one in twenty-five, but it's I think it's worth every bit of the one in twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you look at the pre-orders at the minute and you look at eBay, it's gone for a lot more than that. Um, and I think this is going to be one of these covers where they'll more than likely bring out like the black and white version, they'll bring out yeah. the foil version and stuff like that. Stunning, one of the one of the mm -hmm. better Harley covers that I've seen this year. Yeah, what do you think, Charlie? Hundred percent. And as soon as you sent it through, I literally reached out to James at Slug Crusaders and went, "Can I buy it?" And he was <laughs> like, "I've literally got one because it's a one in twenty-five." I was like, "Yes, I, I want to take it off your hands." So I, I purchased that. I'm very happy with it. And yeah, I think it's an it's an amazing cover. It is an amazing cool. cover. It's fantastic. Yeah. I don't even think I would take the the the, the Harley at the bottom no. away. Do you know, like some, sometimes they start playing with these covers just so that they yeah. can make like a 150 or a 175. But I, I just think this is one of the one of the best covers I've seen this year. Honestly, I think I think it really just everything about it works. And I'm I'm kind of I think I've I think I've said to James that I want him to go off at CGC, but because he's only got one of them, he's going to have a look over it and see if it's actually worth sending off. It's worth it, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because if it isn't, then I'm, I'm happy to just do that and put it in one of them uh, magnetic slab things that I've got. Sweet, so, cool. And there we go, look back, Dan Dixon, this is bloody hard to get hold of. It is very hard to get hold of. Even the suppliers in the US are just literally selling out and it's going for silly money, as Andy said, over on eBay. So if you do manage to get one for a reasonable price, I'll definitely pick it up. But yeah, Andy, this is a gorgeous, mate. Gorgeous. 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 So I've gone for, it's a DC week this week. I've gone for Night Terror's Punchline issue number one, and I've gone for the Ben Oliver cover B. I've just gone for, I just think this was freaky. And even like, after you picked the Harley one, I just thought this was, this really stood out. And this was, if, if, if the story was to live up to it, I'd be very surprised but the story doesn't live up to it, so the cover stands out on its own, and I think it's a freaky-ass cover. I can very much confirm that the and story does not really, live up to, really good. to to this cover. Um, that Ben Oliver is one of the most underrated cover mm -hmm. artists out there at the minute. I don't think he gets the kudos that he deserves, not uh, at all. especially if you look at his sort of back catalogue of work. Um, reminds me a lot of sort of Ryan Brown-esque type yeah. uh, artwork. Uh, Joshua Middleton elements of that. But this, this is something that just completely stands out as soon as you see it. Um, it's got that shock factor to it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think this this is a, a good pick, Charlie. Good pick. I think if, if this was a foil, I think it'd be really, really impactful. But I think it's just... Do you know, the, the whole foil thing's got a little bit in there. You know what I mean? Everybody seems to be doing that now. Even like the old classic covers, like, you know, the blue, blue chip keys and stuff like that yeah. are starting to come out as, as foils. Yeah. You know, it's not it's nineteen ninety all over again. You know? Yeah, but what we're going to do, I am trying to get uh, the the show. I'm trying to get the, the thing up on my phone because I can't do the YouTube in. It won't let me um, post. It seems to be up. It seems to be up. Um, it's really? The vote? Are you talking about the vote? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The vote's up. So Tom must be doing it in the background. Tom is working. Ah, oh, there we go. Look, I've set up for the vote. Just need to click go. Will be five minutes. Look at that. That even when he's on a call doing his business, he's literally doing stuff for the channel. So yes, yeah, so the vote is up. You've got mine, the Ben Oliver cover B. You've got uh, Andy's one in twenty-five, so Jamaica, and you have Tom's one in twenty-five, Dan Panacean cover. Place the votes, and I'll happily announce them at the end of the show. <laughs> Place your votes now, Be begrudgingly. <laughs> so. Here we go. Right, so the cover that was won last week on the community tab over on YouTube was 
Jeff Lemire's Fish Flies issue number one from week 28, which was last week. Now, if you tuned into the man like Triple G on Sunday night, you would have seen that we've done some rapid reviews of this. We covered uh, 762 issues that came out last week of Night Terrors. Uh, we touched on a few other ones, but this one was the winning vote uh, for this show this week. And also, because I've already kind of gave my review of it, I'm going to hand it over to you, Andy, because I think we've had a lot to say about this in the chat and discussion, as, as you would have seen over on Triple G's channel, I had a lot to say about it as well. Having read it again, I've got some other things as well, but yeah, if you want to take it away. Oh yeah, starting to change your tune, Andy. No, 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 yeah. did, oh, not did, at all, not at all. Did, did, you, did you annoy Mr Lemire and uh, and uh, you want to backtrack now on those horrible <laughs> things all. you said about this book? Not at all, not at all. Not at Absolutely all. shocking. Uh, yes, yeah, so this this was originally my my pick uh to 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 read um and i was so glad that that people voted for it because i thought this book was fantastic i, I couldn't understand the review that you were given and and um peter gave obviously each to their own um but i would imagine that's probably something to do with the fact that you did read 783 comics that week <laughs> and it was probably like last on the list sort of thing because i know that you get you can get sort of comic fatigue yeah and you know you don't take it in but um this this particular so this was written um the artwork is by jeff lemire so i'm maybe starting the artwork this, the artwork is typical jeff lemire um you can spot it from a mile away it's got that sort of gritty-esque sort of you know skit that the face is kind of a sketchy you know it's got that sort of raw kind of a look about it um and I like that. I love it. I love when uh, Jeff Lemire does like cover art and stuff like that for other for different books. It's normally the ones that I pick up. Um, the the synopsis for for this I thought was re a really intriguing one. Obviously, Jeff Lemire is is written sweet too. Um, and the synopsis read: When a brutal and violent crime puts the life of an innocent teenage uh, boy in the balance, it sets off a chain of events uh, in Bell River, Ontario. That will permanently change several residents' lives. And as a man hunt he, uh, heats up, a lonely girl named Franny Fox will form an unlikely friendship with a fugitive that leads them on an odyssey of discovery and redemption. So I thought sounds absolutely fantastic. Sounds really intriguing. What we got with this particular book, I think, was effectively the first chapter of a longer graphic novel. Um Whenever you read the, the last couple of pages at the end of this book, Jeff Lemire even admits that this was originally on his Substack, and it was it was written in the form that it was going to be released all at once, but then they decided to do it in, in comic form. And I think that's maybe where this first issue would potentially fall down with a lot of readers, because I think the expectation, especially with it being on free comic book day, mm -hmm. a lot of people had the expectations of this first issue being a real, like, you know, kicking off really quickly and it, and, it, and it giving a lot back to the reader. I don't think it, it managed to do that, but it gave me enough because my expectations were kind of a low, to be honest with you. And I didn't read the free comic book day, so I knew nothing about it. I, I didn't, you know, have any spoilers or anything like that. Um, do you do you want me to go in, Charlie, just give them a bit, little bit of a, an overview of, of sort of what happened in the book? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Hey, Hello. Hey, hey. There he is. There he is, just in time to talk about fish flies. Fantastic. Oh. Welcome. Have I missed welcome. the covers? Uh, yes, you have missed the covers. Uh, the vote has gone spectacularly well. Let me give you a, a very quick update. Uh, Charlie is not winning. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Charlie um. is not winning. See you, Charlie. <laughs> See you. Um, so, uh, fish flies issue one, so it opens up with a group of teenagers and they're kind of a standing outside a shop um, and it's completely engulfed in fish flies. So fish flies are, 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 are actually a real thing and it yeah. happens once a year. I think it's right about Canada and stuff like that, whatever, there's lots of lakes and things like that. And they basically rise up from the bottom of the water whenever it gets to a certain uh, temperature. And they, they all basically go to whatever there's light, but they only survive for like 40 hours before they literally just all die. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a bit of a phenomenon around the world that why this happens. And they're called fish flies because whenever they die and people stand on them, that's the smell that you get because they've been river, uh, uh, living at the bottom of the river for so long. Um, so, yeah, going back to my... The, the more you know. Um, 
So <laughs> when, when these teenagers standing outside the shop, they, they see that the shop is covered in fish flies. Uh, and basically the group of boys, which you can see on the left-hand side, uh, go to each other to say, well, you go to the shop, you go. Um, and one of them who we kind of find that is kind of a, like the, the person that's kind of a bully yeah. to a certain yeah, extent. Yeah. Mm. They go, well, well, you go, you you go, and um, we're, we're paying for your stuff anyway because you can't afford it. And he goes, right, okay, I'll do it. Um, takes off his shoes, walks across the, sh- uh, and all you hear is crunch, crunch, or all you see is big full pages saying crunch. So it's given that sort of idea of it being really, you know, him going wading through all these uh, dead fish flies. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Gets to the shop and is suddenly stopped and startled because the shop is getting robbed. And the person that's robbing the shops looks up and goes to, to shoot the young boy. And it's at that point we see a, a, a sort of flash to a guy lying in a field. Um, Charlie, I'll maybe pass over to you. You can sort of take it from there. And Yeah, so, back, so obviously, like, echoing what a few people like Connie and everyone said in the chat, I think we said it before, Jeff Lemire is fantastic at what he does. Like, he's, he, he wrote Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth comics amazing. The TV show is fan- phenomenal. He's done uh, he's done Family Tree, he's done May's book, he's done um, Little Vampires. They're all good. And I think, do you know what? I set myself up for a fall because... I kind of get into Jeff Lemire and I read, and then about halfway through, I kind of think, again? I'm, I'm, I'm getting bored again. The window. I'm get, I'm, yeah, Tom, shut, yeah, Tom, shut the window. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I get halfway through, and I think I'm setting myself up for a fall here because I know in, in previous Jeff Lemire comics I've read before, it gets a bit boring, and then it comes back. So I'm kind of like, I'm half expecting it. This one, I read... New comic book day, uh, free comic book day, and I read it, and it obviously it stops halfway through this comic. So I read that, and I really enjoyed it, and I thought, oh, it's going to progress. I, I want to know more. I want to know what's happening. Unfortunately for me, it, it I just got confused. After where free comic book day finished, I kind of just got confused, and now I'm just kind of like, I don't really know what's going on. And I think Peter said this. I don't know if Jeff Lemire's writing style and his concept and everything that he tries to create is too intelligent for me. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I can understand where he's going. I can understand the character development, the narrative, the whole the whole forthcoming of the comic and, and everything. I just, I don't know what I was expecting from this comic. And I think where I set myself up for a fall, it was going to be boring in the middle. I couldn't shift that. And even though I read it again for the second time, yeah, I did get to the end thinking, this is, it is interesting. I do want to, I do want to like follow it through, but I just don't know where it's going. I, I can't work it out. I'm just confused. <laughs> Tom? Uh, I would totally agree with that that last little bit that Charlie said about being confused. I read this book and I actually really enjoyed it. And I think I, think I enjoyed it because I didn't know what was going on. Um, I found it quite engaging that... that, that, that it almost said like there was three stories going on. So you've obviously got the story of the three lads... <laughs> Um, who going in the shop that you mentioned earlier. Then you've got the story of the guy who's robbing the joint. And then you've got the story of the little girl who hasn't got the best relationship with her father. And I think the three stories are obviously going to, you know, mm-hmm. all intertwine that it's all going to yeah. come together. That's obviously the premise of the story. And this little girl is obviously going to make friends with the monster that has been created from these fish flies. But what I like about it is that it is really confusing and it made it very interesting I really wanted to know. I want to know what happened to this young boy. I want to know who shot the guy that is robbing the joint because he wasn't shot to start with. And then if you look at the, when the panel, when he yes. wakes up, he's got a bullet wound. Yeah. So where did that happen? Like, how did that come about? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I want to know what the relationship is with the little girl and her dad and why he hates her so much. Like, what's that all about? Um, so there's a lot of areas I want to explore within this book. And I think Jeff Lemire's done a really good job of engaging me. However, I'll go back to what Charlie just said. The problem with Jeff Lemire's work at the moment, I find, is it starts off well. It teeters off in the middle, and then it really doesn't bring you back towards the end. I mean, Little Monsters dragged for me, and May's book I didn't even finish. So I am really hope we don't get that with the fish flies, because I've got really good hopes. But then I have good hopes for the other two as well. Like So I don't know, maybe there's something missing, but I did really enjoy this book. I, I would you know say you know this is a solid eight. For me, I really did enjoy it. I thought it was good. And if you guys read the synopsis at the end, yeah, after yeah. the whole thing's yeah. finished, 
uh, Jeff Lemire goes into why he's written this book mm-hmm. and how it all came about and how like he wanted to write a monster movie kind of style book and then he wanted to write a book about the fish flies and you just kind of combine the two together so I thought that was pretty cool and the artwork is is also quite cool in this book the artwork is the artwork is phenomenal and I kind mm. of like I think I was more interested on like the lost boys element at the start of it like yes. these three boys like where have they been they're, they're obviously like daring each other is is the one that's got no money is he just part of the gang because he wants someone to be friends with and the other two are just like mugging him off saying, oh, you go and do this. We'll, we'll pay you to go and do this because you're going to do it anyway because you've got no money. Um, but it, it, I'm, I'm more interested to find out what Andy's theory is because when Andy says he's got a theory, it always blows my mind and I'm always chomping at the bit because it always sat on a, on a Tuesday. I've read the comment, I've got a theory, and I'm like, I've now got to wait three days to find out what this theory <laughs> is. So... Andy, what's your theory? <laughs> I, I, I don't like the way that you built this up because you ever been able to be like, is that that sounds a bit strange. Well, you did um, a theory. There's a couple of books you've done a theories about where they've always seemed to pan yeah. out, which is why yeah. we call you the Oracle Man. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll premise this. So the the whole the whole fish fly thing, the, I th- I think the fish fly thing is 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 more of a horror element to this mm-hmm. um, because they're kind of a like set up as just sort of been there and it's just part of the story um and the whole crunch thing and all the rest of it but i think that it's the the fish flies is more of a horror element where it ha- they have an agenda and it's like all, all the fish flies effectively are, are willing to sacrifice themselves and their own bodies to achieve what they want to happen in this particular story so death attracts like flies, but what if the fish flies attract death? Was kind of a where mm. my thinking was at with this. This shit and, just got deep. You know, I, I probably too deep for this for 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 this comic. No, but not but not at all. No, I think. No, yeah. I know. What? what I, I, yeah, I totally get you. What if these people are? What? What if Fran uh, and the boy are the same people? What? What? What if this is all just like a kind of a a, a dream or a, or a nightmare of some sort? Um, because if you notice, whenever they're in the shop, the, the shopkeeper who's lying on the floor mm-hmm. looks really, really like Fran's dad. Yeah. It, lo- it looks like her father. And it's almost like, I think they're all one and the same people. And this is kind of a like um, Fran's way of sort of escaping because it's quite clear that the relationship that she has with her dad isn't the greatest. Yeah. Um, and maybe this is her sort of daydreaming as it were um and the, the fish flies are a way of escaping for her which you know like, I, i'm interested to know like why you picked the panel that you did because it's basically like a mirror image that's her that's... house that's where he's and, and do you know what it is i don't know like and the, the confusing thing is why i picked like my middle panel is because as you mentioned tom we don't see who shot him no all we see is the kid enter the shop Say he just wanted to buy some popsicles, and the next thing, boom, he gets shot. We don't even see shot the same place. Yeah, we shot don't the even, same place. Yeah. Do we even know that the kid's been shot? Yeah, At because point, I can't. We don't know, but they can they confirm it in a comic because the dad's oh, yes, yes, the kid that gets shot. But is where he shot the kid? Has he shot himself? Do you know what I mean? Is it is it all like a third world like kind of? could go back to what like andy said like a is, twilight zone type of thing is this story one person's story like maybe you know fran is the little girl who's scared of her dad she grows up she gets challenged by her friends to go into a shop and then she then mu- like mugs the shop off and gets shot it's like is she the main character like is she all of them like andy said i mean now my, now my mind's gone <laughs> i i, 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 de- to find out what I definitely think they're all the same character 100 mm. percent uh, that's when I'm going with it because I think Fran is Fran is, is the older boy and the older boy is the, the guy who becomes the the, fa- the fly. It's yeah. all the one yeah. person. I, I know it sounds really stupid, but I think there's a significance with the snotty nose. I think there's something there's something to do with that because they highlighted it so much, and I think the relationship with her dad. I'd be interested to see, like everyone in the chat that's read it. I'd be interested to see what their theories are. Because I think that one is, and I think you're right, it, it does seem to be that the mirror image is that they're one and the same person. And where he shot the kid, he actually shot himself. Uh, in, in, it's like a Twilight Zone type of thing. Hmm. Definitely go back and check the panel when they're in the shop because it definitely looks as if it's a resemblance of 
her father and it almost as if they're going back in time to look at that that Fran growing up. So Fran's mm-hmm. growing up. Fran has decided that 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 she she's a boy, and that that then transpires into this whole shop episode and getting shot, and then the guy that's in the field and wakes up, who's been shot in the exact same place, is actually Fran. Mm. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, now you said it. Do you think about how the panels pan out and how it all kind of connects together? It could well be. It doesn't mean that each story, because you don't see them apart from the obviously the monster and Fran, you don't really see them all together. So it's almost like it could be that's st- like it all panning out. So she's kind of talking to her elder self. Bloody hell, this is, is it? Yeah, Do you know it's what got I mean? deep. Yeah, it's got deep. But I mean, this is what, so obviously I, I didn't thoroughly enjoy it. Um, I thought it was okay. I didn't thoroughly enjoy it because I didn't get it. So I was confused and stuff. But the thing is with Jeff Lemire, like he does things like this to engage you and kind of get you involved in it. And now that I've under, I heard your two like breakdowns and theories of it, I want to read it again, see if I've missed anything, which is the beauty of comics because I've read it totally different way to you've read it to the way Tom's read it as well. You're on mute, Andy. It's like you think it's my first rodeo, wouldn't you? <laughs> I think I think that's the beauty of comics. Normally, um, Charlie, I'm mute. Exactly. I think that's the beauty of comics. I think everybody has their own understanding and perception of it. But I think the key is is to read this book, go out and get it, and give it a read, uh, and take your time, um, and just remember that this just is the, f- the first part of this story. So don't. Don't have no expectations, but just see what you take from it. As, as, see, look, as GP said, I need to go and read it again now, and I think that's what everyone's going to have to do. The only thing with this, though, is as GP said, I can't believe we've got to wait until September. Yeah, the issue. This too. seems to be an ongoing thing with Jeff Lemire's work, unfortunately, that uh, he is essentially like taking forever to, to get it out there. But I think because he's doing the art and the writing as well. I mean, look how in depth these are. You can you can understand why it's taking two or three months to get a comic out there, but. Who knows? I think overall I'm going to give this a seven um, and that might change once I read it for a third time. But I, 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 after hearing what you guys have said, I want to understand it a lot more. I want to look into it with that mindset now that they're all the same person because I kind of didn't do that. I kind of read it as three separate stories and then there's going to be a coming together of all of them. And we're going to find out the relationships and stuff. So yeah. thank, thank, thanks for putting it there. And then we'll realise I was completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, You've been yeah. right quite a few times. Yeah, but yeah, I'm going to give it a seven for for art and and writing. Tom, you said an eight, didn't you? I did. I'm going to give it an eight as well. All right, sweet. That was good. Enjoyed that. I've read it three times. I'm going to read it three times, and then we'll see if I if I change my mind. I doubt I will. <laughs> So we are now at the final order cutoff top three. Now, obviously, we've been doing this for the past, what, four or five weeks now. And obviously, final order cutoff FOC is the date retailers must submit their orders before publishers set their print runs. Basically, in layman's terms, it's the, the final day to get your comic orders in before the comic shops turn around and say, eh, eh, you can't order the comic this week. It's already See. done. You might be able to get it, but it might be a bit harder for you. Uh, for Slab Crusaders, as we uh, like to order ours, they must be in before 9 p.m. each Sunday it is now. So I need to change that back. So, yeah, or they may be cancelled. So up first, I went, I've, I'm absolutely loving this. And massive shout out to Sarsman Kudronsky um, for uh, for like the reposting and, and speaking to me on DMs and stuff like this. This is, honestly, it says it all in the title, something epic. This is fantastic. This is issue number four, obviously, with like an Indiana Jones type of homage cover we've got going there, written by Sizeman Kudrunsky and the art and cover art by Sizeman Kudrunsky as well. This is issue number four. Looking forward to reading this. It's been fantastic. Not you guys? Same on. Same on. Same on. Same on. Same on. Same on. But are you, are you guys loving Same this? On. Are you guys loving uh, this? I actually haven't read this, but I've got it stacked to read because I want to read it all in one go. Because I think, I don't know whether it was yourself, Charlie, that said that like issue one and two were really good. Um, but having that gap where you had to wait to read issue two was annoying. So I was mm-hmm. going to wait to have the whole lot and do it in one yeah. go. I, I think I only, I only started reading this because Peter was doing it on his show. And I was kind of like, oh, let me get ahead. And by that time, there was two, there was three issues for me to read. And I did enjoy it because I think it's quite... It's quite narrative heavy. There's quite a lot of artwork and to get your heads around and stuff. So when you read it and you have a break, you kind of forget what you was reading. So reading them three 
on the trot was was enjoyable, which is why I've gone for it because it's the beginning of an epic adventure, something epic. So scan that barcode. Oh, oh, so yeah, that's me. I've gone for Harley Quinn, Black, White, and Redder, uh, issue two. Um, I did know who the uh artists was, um, but it says various, so various has done the art on this. Uh, um, but this is a uh, a cardstock variant, I believe, of this particular cover. So I picked it because I just like the negative um, variant of it. It's a bit very John Tyler Christopher mm. vibes, so I liked it. So this is one I would definitely get as a cover, pure cover buy. It's definitely more than one artist and, and writer because I, I had the misfortune of reading issue number one this week, um, and uh, is it? it's like it's three three different stories, and yeah. issue yeah. one was pretty poor. Uh, yeah, I've read issue number one. I enjoyed it. I thought I thought it was alright, but it's hard. How, how, how could you possibly enjoy that issue? Man, honestly, it was it's Harley shocking. Quinn. Harley Sean. Quinn, man. Oh, um, anyway, speaking of shocking uh, issues, uh, Night Terrors, Catwoman, issue number two, uh, from DC. Uh, this is a, a, a cover by. Uh, this is by the fantastic Tula Lotte, uh, and that's the reason I put this on my pull list. Uh, so go hit that QR code and it will take you straight there to, to pick up the raw copy or slab copy if you so wish. That is gorgeous. That is it. That is a really, really nice card. Is that do you know if it's gonna be cardstock? Or foil cardstock. or anything? Yeah, cardstock. Pretty yeah. much it's any really DC nice. variant is cardstock yeah. now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just the whole night terrors. I think the majority of them are gonna be cover buys because the stories, other than I think it was one this week which was Nightwing, which was which was decent. The rest Night of one was great. Sh- yeah. The rest of them have been horrendous. This but, this one issue number one of Catwoman was was because I, I actually I actually went into them this week, going right okay I'm mm-hmm. I'm not gonna I'm gonna just leave all those ones that I've let, read and like like start fresh, and uh, Nightwing was the last one that I read so I was like giving up hope at that point but that that saved it for me. That one. But yeah, so if you scan the three bit, three barcodes, uh, QR codes even, you'll be able to go over to Slap Crusaders and then you can kind of pick up comics that you want. And obviously they're updated every Wednesday. So there's a various amounts of comics for you to pick up over there. Now, what have we got next? Oh, yes, Andy, over oh, to you, sir. Sit back and relax. Yeah, we have Coloured Indie Picks for July 26th, which is obviously next week's uh, new comic book day. Uh, first up uh, is... One for you, Charlie. We have Alice Never After from Boom Studios. Uh, this is written by the fantastic Dan Panacean, and artwork is by Giorgio Spalletta. Uh, so this is the, the follow-up uh, to the, the series. I think we read all the issues for that series, don't we, Charlie? We Tom? did, mate, yeah. Um, yeah. We, um, I think so we originally we... picked it because of the J. Scott Campbell cover I picked for um, one of the cover picks, and then it kind of, we've all yeah. just gone this massive, down this massive Dan Panacean rabbit hole. Rabbit hole, as it were. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> Yeah, boom, boom. Um, so yeah, uh, the oh, synopsis boom, boom. is Alice finally got her wish. Wonderland has become her new home, but with her abuser's avatar with the uncanny grin turning the mad residents of a moonstruck world against her, she's clung for a little rash rationality amongst the chaos. Uh, as Alice's sister Edith and her childhood friend Earl fight for a way to fi- bring her back, Alice has to contend with whether or not her torment is due to her father, herself, or maybe a curious combination of both. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to this. I can't, I can't wait to read this. Yeah, right, right. I really can't. And if you follow Dan Panacean on Instagram or Facebook, he's, he's putting up pages and pages of, of like artwork that he's done for it and little insights into what it's going to be and stuff like that. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to this one. Cool. Next up, uh, from AWA Upshot, we have The Ribbon Queen. Uh, this is from Garth Ennis, uh, writing, nice. and uh, Jason Burrows, or J- Jason Burrows. Um, the, the synopsis for this is a bit wordy, guys, so I'm not going to bother reading it. What I'm going to say to you is trust AWA Upshot, go have a look on Previews World, give it a read, and I- I'm just really intrigued the fact that Garth Ennis is, is writing this story for AWA Upshot, because... It, Garth is going to have effectively free reign um, to create and do what he wants, and and that really really intrigues me. Uh, it's so very exciting, that up. mate. To be fair, because Garth Ennis is like, well, he's an incredible writer anyway, but to give yeah. him free reign, 
We're going to get something spectacular. Well, I hope we get something spectacular. And it's AWA, so they're going to be able to push the boundaries a little bit. Exactly, exactly. So looking forward to to that one. Uh, last up is a little bit of a sort of wild card that I picked from Scout Comics. Uh, this is Space Outlaw issue number one, and this is written and also artwork by Marco Font- Fontanini. Yeah, Fontanini. Yeah, we'll go for Fontanini. that. Fontanini. Uh, indeed. Uh, so the most dangerous criminal <laughs> in the solar system, the F24K prisoner, has escaped from the maximum security prison on Mars. Upon fleeing the facility, he manages to reach planet Earth, where he is intent on resuming his criminal exploits. The prison's wardens, however, send the deadliest of their robots to stop the dangerous villain. So I got a little bit of Star Wars-esque about this particular one. So uh, sort of, you know, the old cowboy westerns meets st- uh, Star Wars stroke Star Trek. I'm all in. Give it, give it to me. Yeah, sounds good. This just looks like, uh, all I can see is Chuck Norris. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This looks this looks wicked though. Like, I think, and again, because obviously indie scout comics AWA, they're just putting out some good stuff at the moment. I like this cover though because you can kind of see the X-rays of his his intestines and stuff like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, the, the, the reason I picked these is just to highlight the ones that maybe go under the radar that people don't mm. don't realise are there. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in these these, make sure that you go to your LCS and pick them up. Boom. Right, so now I'm very excited about this because I'm, I'm well excited about this. I've been working hard on it and I'm ecstatic. Like my, my, my time's come around again, so without further ado, I'm just going to jump straight into it. Get in. So this week I've gone with a create showcase for the one and only Sean Gordon Murphy, who I think if you if you don't know by now, created the probably the best Batman universe in in recent times. Um, he's obviously created the Murphyverse, as as loads of people will obviously know. But what a lot of people don't know is that he's done some seriously good stuff before before Batman. I think with like everyone being like a, a comic book lovers and, and everything, they kind of just thought that he kind of created this Murphy verse and jumped into it and then created that. And then no one really heard about him beforehand. But obviously Sean Gordon Murphy is an American comic book creator known for work on books such as Joe the Barbarian with Grant Morrison, uh Cronenauts with Mark Miller, American Vampire, Survival of the Fittest, and The Wake with Scott Snyder. Tokyo Ghost with Rick Remender and the miniseries Punk Rock Jesus. He's also to the creator of what I just said, the Murphy verse written uh, Batman White Knight and sequels Curse of the White Knight and Beyond the White Knight. So he also, he gained significant recognition for his work on titles like Batman the White Knight, which I've mentioned time and time again, which both he wrote and illustrated. Now, I think the illustrations and the phenomenal artwork and the writing style of that comic was, was second to none. It was one of the best Batman stories. It was kind of the first Batman story that really got me into to Geeky Guy comics and everything. What, what about you guys? Uh, for me, for Sean Murphy, I would say uh, Tokyo Ghost uh, was kind of the first book that that I picked up uh, of Sean's. Um, and I always remember that when, when I got to meet him at New York Comic Con, uh, because whenever I was in the queue for, for waiting for him, and, and there was like a, a couple that were standing talking to him, and you know, the queue is absolutely massive, and I'm standing there waiting for like maybe half an hour. Gets up to, to go in and he apologises, says, oh, I'm really sorry for, for the way. And I was like, absolutely no problem. And what I didn't realise is the couple that were standing there were uh, J. Scott Campbell and his wife. <laughs> ah, yes. So, I think uh, yeah, was, you told us that before, mate. That's yeah, crazy. it was pretty special. So he actually took my book and done like a little sketch. I was I was trying to find it, but I couldn't find it to, to show tonight. But he done like a little uh, sketch and stuff like that and signed it to me. So, yeah, that, that was my first encounter with Sean uh, one-on-one. And it was absolutely superb. That's awesome, man. What about you, Tom? So I got into Sean Murphy's work uh, through Batman the White Knight. I was recommended it from a friend. He was like, literally, you need to read this. You'll love it. 
Um, the guy's artwork is insane. I was like, oh, all right, I'll give it a go. Bit reluctant because I'm not a huge Batman fan. I was like, oh, a bit reluctant. Read it, and The White Knight is probably my favorite Batman comic, period. Um, I just think it's well written. The, the artwork's incredible. Um, and what he's created from that, the whole premise behind The White Knight was just incredible. I'm sure we'll probably get into it a bit later on, but yeah, uh, that was my first encounter with with uh, with Sean, and I'm, I'm so glad I did, to be fair, because I've now gone down that kind of Sean Murphy verse. Is mm-hmm. this like, is the Don to me, man? Yeah. I mean, because it's interesting, Andy, that you said Tokyo Ghost, because Tokyo Ghost and Joe the Barbarian now are comics that I'd read, but didn't really realize that how amazing sean gordon murphy was until i kind of got into the batman i think because batman's one of my favorite characters i invested a lot of time in reading in reading batman and the white knight and stuff but going back over and doing this last today i realized how good joe the barbarian actually is and then like the whole the whole thought process of the story and everything behind it i mean because obviously with sean gordon murphy like he won Eyes not awards for for the way that he created his Batman. I mean, he's like literally, he's like killing it at the moment with like what he's creating with this whole Murphy verse. Um, so obviously, Murphy uh, is obviously known for his dark and gritty style, and his work often delves into complex and thought provoking narratives. So, if you haven't read the Batman Murphy verse, it's it kind of tells the whole different version, the alternative version of Batman, where the Joker in the story challenges the traditional hero of Batman, and Batman becomes the kind of villain, and the Joker becomes this White Knight, which is which is a fantastic take because I don't think this has ever been done in DC before. And where this is DC black label is allowed to push the boundaries a lot more, which is more enjoyable. So that's a, a brief overview of, of Sean Gordon Murphy. So obviously we touched on like what our first encounters was for me. My first encounter was when I first started geeky guy comics, this was the first comic I reviewed on oh, my nice. page this was the first without even knowing that i was like obviously i was doing this today but this was, that, was... Is that your first review because i've watched that video i did not realize that was your first one that's, that's awesome my instagram right yeah when my first i was going through it today and before i started before i got down to geeky guy comics my first ever post was this guy this geeky guy who reviews comics right and this was the first one and I literally I did not know that I wrote out a whole review of this comic. And I think going back over it, Matt Hollingsworth reposted it. Right. Because obviously Matt Hollingsworth worked with uh, Sean Murphy on this and it's fantastic. And I was just like looking at this thinking, this is what really for me, if, if this Batman universe was the, the universe that we all knew, I think it would be such an amazing place. It's just fantastic and i honestly i'm such a massive fan of of sean gould and murphy so obviously i've heard about like your first encounters and stuff like that but that was mine and that was kind of it's kind of come full circle that we're kind of reviewing him now and that was what kind of got me into geeky guy comics along with wolverine isn't that ironic that it's come full, full circle and you're now like reviewing it again and bringing him as in as a showcase i think that's really cool mate what yeah. a cool like cool kind of infinity style like story to tell mate that's wicked love that yeah so obviously we're going to go like what i've done here i've I've kind of mixed in the publication history and the recommended reads as well because going over a few he's got so much and i didn't want to just kind of go over it and over it again so obviously 2003 was crush which was a mini series it was four issues it was published in october 2003 it was written by Jason Hall, and the art was obviously done by Sean Murphy. Now, this is in a world of subtle horrors. Elizabeth Crush is about to meet one monster she never encountered on herself. This is basically about on her 18th birthday, Elizabeth undergoes a transformation and becomes kind of like a, a, a werewolf, uh, vampire type of thing, a uh, monster known as Crush. Um, I only ever read the first issue of this, and I can't work out for the life of me why I never continued it because. It's a great comic. The art you can you can you can tell on all these slides. You can tell how distinctive Sean Murphy's artwork is. Like you can you can now recognise a, a Sean Murphy artwork and a Sean Murphy yeah. story because it's bloody phenomenal. If I'm being honest, have either of you read this? I have not, mate. But I've never heard of Jason Hall as a, as a writer. So I think going back to what you said about I don't know why I continued this on. It might be because the writing might be shite. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've never heard of Jason Hall. So that's not me judging him. I'm just saying I've never heard of him. I've never been recommended anything that he's written. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I might pick it up and have a go because obviously Sean Murphy's artwork is incredible and it, it probably could hold its own, mm -hmm. if you like. And this is Dark Horse Comics as well. So it's, yeah. it's kind of going to kind of be pushed the boundaries more than DC would. And then we go on from that. Andy, have you, you haven't read Crash, have you? Haven't, I, I've not even heard of it. I'll, I'll be honest with you, if I'm going for a book, uh, I wouldn't go on just on the basis of Sean Murphy mm -hmm. doing the artwork, if I'm mm. honest. Uh, I think I think it would need to be uh, a combination of him doing some of the writing as well, because I think that's what I'm I, I'm more invested in than, than, than the artwork. So. Yeah, no, no, okay. I do get you. I, I think later on towards his career, where, where, he started, where he starts to do the writing as well, I think that's where kind of a lot of people jumped on, as you said, where if he's doing the writing and he's doing the art as well, it's kind of more more 360, like, combined and stuff. So then we come on from that. 2005 is Batman Year One Scarecrow. So this was, I think it was two issues. Um, this was written by Bruce Jones and, and art by Sean Murphy. And basically, the, the synopsis of this is, you think you know everything there is to know about the Scarecrow and his origin, then think again. Year One, Batman Scarecrow goes back to the very beginning to Jonathan Crane's birth, and questionable lineage. Uh, lineage. Uh, is that is that even a word? Lineage. 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 Yeah. There we go. There we go. Lineage. <laughs> from the, 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 lineage. the dyslexic's the only one that knows what it says. <laughs> the, the lineage and follows lineage. his story up to his lineage. first appearance, taking on a Batman and Robin. This again, I, I haven't. I didn't even know it was him that did this. I really didn't. But it looks that's, amazing. That's not a Sean Murphy cover, isn't it? Not? No. No, it's not a Sean oh, Murphy cover, but the interior, the interior artwork is is Sean Murphy. And but having flicked through it uh, on on various platforms that you can kind of read comics these days, it's it's good. It is it is his early stuff. It's his early stuff, but it's still good. Like you can see the panel that I've highlighted behind. That's what that's what like the majority of the panel is like. So oh yeah, yeah. Question, Charlie, as the as the host of with the most, um, is this his first? Uh, go at Batman then this one yes uh, Batman yeah. year one because I would yeah. I personally would have assumed um the white Knight was his first go at Batman but that's really cool that you've managed to bring this up mm -hmm. that this was his first shout at Batman that's really cool I got obviously not a lot of people would know that that's wicked no not See, a lot of people would know that but that's that's what it is I think when when Sean Murphy kind of done this Batman the Murphy verse as it's as it's been like named now but people thought oh this is this is the first time that he'd done batman which is kind of why i've highlighted uh, the majority of some of the stuff that he'd done earlier earlier because people would have thought as you said well sean murphy's only ever done batman white knight presents and batman yeah. harley quinn etc etc but no he did batman uh year one scarecrow issue number one and did issue number two as well so if you if you want to go ahead and read that and and see how good he was back then go for it then we've got this one. So Joe the Barbarian. This is eight issues. This was published in March 2010, written by Grant Morrison and the artist by Sean Murphy. This one is it's it's a lot of emotion. Like I really, really enjoyed this. And you can you can kind of pick this up, I think, for about 15, 16 pounds of trade paperback on Amazon or eBay. Um, but for people that haven't read it or, or, or know what it's about, is Joe is in an imaginative young child of 11 who happens to suffer from type 1 diabetes. Without supervision and insulin, he can easily slip into a delirious disassociative state that passes, uh, that presages, coma and death. One fateful day's condition causes him to believe he has entered a vivid fantasy world in which he is the last sa uh, lost saviour, a fantasy land based on layout and contents of his home. This is, for me, this is when you can really start to tell that Sean Murphy was investing a hell of a lot more time in the art instead of like his early days of like the writing and stuff like that. For me, this is, if... The way that I looked at this, if this, if one of these panels was to be in a Batman White Knight now, you wouldn't be able to tell that much difference because it's kind of very much, it's the same line work, it's the same shading, it's the same details and stuff like that. But Joe the Barbarian is, it's an amazing comic. It's a really, really enjoyable comic. Have you read it, Andy? I've not read it, mate. Didn't even know it existed. I would honestly give it a give it a read because it's just. I just really, really enjoyed it. Like, there's so much emotion through this story, and like, you kind of see the, the stories told through the eyes of an 11 year old dealing with diabetes and trying to grow up, and with like the lack of friendship and living in this imaginative world and stuff. It's amazing. Oh, Honestly, it's really, really good. Really, really good. So, we're going for um, 
It is. It's wicked. It really, really is good. Uh, 2010, we go on to 2012. Punk Rock Jesus. Now, this was six issues. Uh, This was written by Sean Murphy, and then also the art was done by Sean Murphy. And a quick breakdown of this is a reality TV show starring a clone of Jesus Christ. Yes, you heard it. A clone of Jesus Christ causes chaos across the US of near future in Punk Rock Jesus. This is just all hell this is like literally this is pushing boundaries here you've, you've kind of got jesus uh it goes by the name of j2 uh and he creates a punk rock band and literally just wants to get away and do his own thing and this is another quality comic like i can't stop singing the guy's praises like there's there's so many things out there that like for instance like night terrors right if if you was to give like certain writers an artist night terrors like that they would do such a better job than what's going on now punk rock jesus is it just pushes back and i think because it was done by vertigo andy you'll probably you've probably read quite a lot of vertigo more than me is was vertigo a a, like a comic um publisher that kind of pushed the boundaries and let you let them do more and get away with stuff oh yeah absolutely yeah vertigo was known for bringing up the the, the writers and the artists that we know of mm-hmm. well today, it was sort of seen as a bit of a stepping stone to get to like DC and Marvel and stuff like that. Um, and for I, I believe that this was the kind of a first book that got Sean's name out there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, not just because of the quality of his artwork and writing, but just because of the content in that book. The the six issues was mm-hmm. kind of a quite quite near yeah. the bone and mm-hmm. uh, touched a lot of nerves. Put it yeah. that way. Yeah, it was, and and again, it's another one that if you're if you're a Sean Murphy fan, you you kind of need this in in your library because this is, as Andy said, it does push the boundaries and it kind of it does a bit close to the bone with some of the stuff, and you kind of like you, you wouldn't be able to see that these days. But yeah, I mean, it was it was 2012 that it was published, so yeah, get on to that. Then we go over to Chrononauts, four issues published in 2015 written by the one and only Mark Miller, a.k.a. Millerverse, and then artist by Sean Murphy. Now, this was... I haven't read this. I've only read the synopsis of it and briefly like, looked over um, some of the pages and stuff, but Corbin Quinn and Danny Riley are two buddies who love to have fun. They're also scientific geniuses. When their research leads them to a time-travelling adventure, will they use their knowledge for the good of mankind or use space-time continuum for their own ends? This is the story of a man's first televised steps through the time stream and everything going wrong in the process. I think if you look at this now, you can kind of see where a lot of the Batman influences have come from. Like, yeah. like the, 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 the character structure, like the artistic design of like the character poses and stuff. And they what I'm trying to say is that you can, you can really see that Sean Murphy has a distinctive style of art and drawing that has gradually over time got better and better to where we are now in the Murphy verse with the likes of the Von Freeze that he put out there, the Batman beyond the white Knight, the Harley Quinn, which he works on with his wife, uh, Katana. But I think, it's good to see from his early stuff to where he is now because with, with the likes of what he's done with uh, Punk Punk Jesus to Joe the Barbarian, you can gradually see that it's kind of picking up and it's, it's, it's wicked. It must be so good to be able to see the work, like if, if I was him, to see the work that I've done, to see where I am now, to think. I, I, I don't think you get a full um, appreciation for uh, Sean's artwork. Um, unless you see the actual black mm-hmm. and white, you know, pencil and inks. Yeah, um, couldn't agree more. Uh, I think yeah. he's a little bit like Greg Capullo in that way, that if you strip all strip it all back just to mm-hmm. the core of what he does, yeah. that's when you go, my goodness, this guy is absolutely fantastic. So um, if you do get the chance, I, I don't know, Tom, maybe you can answer this one. Has um, Sean done a, like an art book, do you know? I don't believe so, mate. Um, no. Not to my knowledge, he hasn't done one because that's what I'm saying. Like, this is really, really cool for me because I didn't know he'd done anything previous to Batman, to be perfectly honest. Um, so, Charlie, you're delivering, mate. It's awesome. Um, but thanks, mate. But yeah, he hasn't he hasn't done an art book, but he has got Sean Murphy Art, which is like a website you can go on and it's kind of got listed all of our all his artwork that's for sale, and he's got like the original drawings of certain pages, certain issues, certain chapters of. Batman White Knight, Beyond the White Knight, Alice Ever After, 
um, Harley Quinn. He's got some stuff out there. I mean, some of the stuff that we'll get to is is costly. It's it's very costly. And when you get down to the uh, the uh, nitty gritty of it, you can understand where it's just everything stripped away, the colour's gone, and it's just a sketch. You can understand why it's so sought after because it's phenomenal. And what he, what he's what he's done, he, I'm not sure about like the previous stuff, and he did it in Joe the Barbarian for two or three pages. At the end of the comics that he does, he kind of just puts in these these blank sketch panels of, of basically how it looked, uh, how it looked before the color was added and stuff like that, and what's coming up in the next chapter. I know in the Batman ones, he'd always say coming up next uh, in the next issue, and it would have literally the black and white sketch images of what we can expect from the next issue and stuff like that. And that's really cool to see because. I'm a massive fan. I think, Andy, you got me into this, a massive fan of reading black and white comics now. Not, I love that because you can kind of look through everything else and you can just see the bare artistic talents of these artists that are putting their time and effort into the comics that they're putting out and we're enjoying. So, yeah. That's that. <laughs> uh, the Wake. Now, this is a 10 issue. This came out in June of 2013. Writer, none and only uh, Mr. Scott Snyder. And the art is obviously by the man at the moment, Sean Murphy. Now, this is about a marine biologist called Lee Archer, who is approached by the Department of Homeland Security for help with a new threat. She declines, but quickly realizes that no one will take no, that they won't take no for an answer. Soon she's plunged into the depths of the Arctic Circle to a secret underwater oil rig where they discovered something miraculous and terrifying. Have any of you read this? I haven't, but I know Andy has. I have a few issues of this. I, I, have I read this? I don't. I don't. You I would, I'm don't sure we talked about this one before, mate. I'm pretty sure when we did the Schneider um, spotlight. Yes. Before, yeah. 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 Before, yeah, yeah. Spoke yeah. about this book. Uh, yeah, I might have. I, I, I don't understand it. It couldn't have been that great because I don't remember it, to be honest with you. Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. But, I mean, this is another one. So, basically, I'm I'm a big fan of Sean Murphy. Um, and I'll hold my hands up and say I haven't read a lot of his earlier stuff. Other than Joe the Barbarian, I haven't really touched on it. But doing these slides today and pulling up the panels and, and like, the synopsis and everything, I want to read everything that he's he's put back now. I, I kind of want to go back and read the stuff like this because like what I'm seeing here, a lot of these similarities like this for me, if you put instead of the wake, if you put Batman on there, you wouldn't, you, you'd look twice to think if that was actually a Batman cover. Yeah, totally. Um, so, but I think that's like massive credit to him where, where credit's due because doing this, I want to go back and read all this stuff. And I think I, I'm definitely going to go and do that. So where it says publication history, this is also a recommended read as well, because it's got two absolute giants of of the comic world at the moment, Sean Murphy and Scott Snyder. So if you do get a chance to read this or you find it in a, in a dollar bin or anywhere you can pick it up, definitely give it a read. Then we've got Tokyo Ghost, Andy. I'm sure you've uh, you, you've read this. This is ten issues. This was uh, this came out in 2016. Uh, Rick Remender and Sean Murphy. The series is set in 2089, a time where humanity is addicted to technology and entertainment. So not so different as to 2023. Um, it follows the story of constables Debbie Decay and Lynn Led Dent working as peacekeepers on the island of Los Angeles. They are given a job that will take them to the last tech free country on earth the garden nation of tokyo and they uh you mentioned that you've read this is it a good comic this is the best thing that sean murphy's been uh, part of this is better than uh the white knight and the white knight and the multiverse or the multiverse cool. the murphyverse is phenomenal um because that, that's one of the things i wanted to sort of say it's like i think sean's become one of those guys i love bit like scott snyder he's synonymous <laughs> with batman um, yeah. And I think for a lot of people, that's where they start. Um, but there's so much before that that mm -hmm. led up to that point. Um, and, and what I would say is I'd totally recommend for everybody to, to not start at the White Knight, is actually to start yeah. on Tokyo Ghost, mm -hmm. on The Wake, and build yourself up to the White Knight. Um, because there's, there's a, there is a, a huge plethora uh, of work that, that Sean's been involved in, not only writing and artwork, that, that that sort of came before he was involved in Batman. And I think what, what I've been doing when I was doing my research and stuff, a lot of these earlier titles are available at, an, at a reasonable price, whether it be eBay, whether it be like second-hand sites, whether it be Amazon and stuff like that. So just like being able to like read some of his early stuff for, for 
a, a decent cost is is something that I think if you're a fan of this, definitely take it off. If you had read the Batman, then you kind of know what you're expecting with the artistic designs and, and the details and stuff like that. So then go back and just read until your heart's content because he's put some fantastic stuff out there and he's got loads more coming up this year. Um, let's just pop over to the chat. Uh, Triple G has joined us. Uh, hi, chaps. Just got in, so we'll watch on the rewind tomorrow. Thank you very much. He's also said, hey, 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 Night Terrors is a modern classic. Mm, I, don't, I don't know about that. Um, he said he's never heard of Wake. Um, did I see a movie of Tokyo Ghost? They did do a movie of that, didn't they? No, I think it's been optioned um, right, okay. for, for a movie. And as soon as that was announced, issue number one sort of shot up in price. Yeah. But I was yeah. just going to say there's a lovely uh, hardback edition. Uh, and there's actually a, a, an even better French edition that you can get of Tokyo Ghost if you're that way oh, wow. inclined, if you're okay. into your omnibuses and stuff. Nice. And then Chris Bower said, just popped off to pick up an or original Sean Murphy piece. And <laughs> maybe not. Just a little out of my budget, but I would recommend looking. It's absolutely incredible work. And that goes back to what we just mentioned, uh, where it is just literally the, the line work is sensational. It really is. We, we will be on to a few of my favourite pieces. Um, so here we go. We're coming into the Murphyverse. So now everyone in for the chat, if you haven't or if you're watching in the Rewind, if you don't know what the Murphyverse is yet, I'll just give you a brief overview of it. So Sean Murphy has created this as, um, I don't even know where it started from. I don't know if the comic community just decided to call it the Murphyverse or I think where it was just literally a totally disassociation of the original Batman. He created his own Batman run. It's just words have, have become and it's become the Murphyverse but believe me it's the best Batman universe there is out there. Uh, the Murphyverse presents an alternative take on Batman mythos where the roles of Batman and Joker are reversed in some ways. In this continuity the Joker is cured of his insanity and becomes Jack Napier, a reformed citizen who takes on the mantle of a hero known as the White Knight. Meanwhile Batman or Bruce Wayne is portrayed as the darker and more obsessive figure often questioning his methods and decisions. The initial series Batman White Knight explores themes of corruption mental health and the consequences of vigilantism it received widespread praise for its thought-provoking narrative complex characterizations and sean murphy's distinctive artwork also for that he won an eisner award for batman white knight which is which is pretty sensational to be fair now i've obviously only i've only put the, the three covers on it which is batman white knight which was the first run in it then we've got batman curse of the white knight which was number two and then batman beyond the white knight which came out 2022 last year this was interesting wasn't it the whole start of the murphy verse loved it I, i'd love the i'd love them to re-release these just black and white no color work. i think that would be would be fantastic because you can just take all the words out and it'd just be a fantastic art book what do you yeah, think, man, like a Japanese manga would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Uh, massive shout out to Triple G. Said you guys got me into White Knight. Love it. Uh, we, we, we're here to help. We. Uh, yeah, we Charlie. Yeah, we try to pretend to uh, to know what we're talking about. So if we can help you uh, pick up a comment that you want to read, that's uh, that's all good. So yes, the Murphy verse. So the first one of this was the White Knight, which I mentioned got me into like my Geeky Guy comics and, and writing the reviews and stuff. That was released in October 2017, um, and that was Batman White Knight, and that was eight issues. Even though it was eight issues, they were in-depth issues. They were phenomenal, like the artwork, the pieces. And as I mentioned, at the end of every single one of these issues, you had the, the black and white images, so you could really see how detailed it was and how much thought and everything went into to creating to creating this universe. Then on July 2019, we had Batman Curse of the White Knight. Again, this was eight issues. Um, this was another great thing. And I think the whole thing behind this is where it's DC Black Label, there's a little bit more nitty-gritty in there. There's a little bit more grittiness in the art. There's a little bit more thought thought-provoking and uh feelings behind the stories uh of, of each of the characters and stuff uh november 2019 you had batman white knight presents von freeze this was a uh, a one shot and i've got to say this was i really really love this von freeze i've i really thoroughly enjoyed this i don't i think we might have even reviewed this on a show or we touched this on a show years and years ago but i do remember reading it with one of you two and i can't remember who it was from freeze yeah do i did we review it on not quite mint did you come on it with us on that i remember reviewing it somewhere because i was just like this is an awesome story just told the story of 
Dr. Von Freeze. That, like, Maybe we, we did do it on this show because we did do Harley Quinn. We did issue yes. one of Harley Quinn for sure. Yeah. And that was only a year later. So maybe it was this show. And I think it was just, I, I really enjoyed it because it just told the story of how Dr. Von Fries had a relationship with um, Bruce Wayne's father and how like he funded everything and how Von Fries was there, like helping uh, Martha Wayne uh, give birth and everything like that. So that, that was a really, really good story. And you kind of understand like the, I think throughout the whole thing, what this is, you kind of see the relationships that Batman's mum and dad had with various villains of Gotham, which is what mm. I like because they're not as squeaky clean as everyone likes to think, which is, no. which isn't really touched on in, in the Batman stories. All we ever get in the, in the original Batman stories is uh, uh, we get to see how his mum and dad died time and time again. What's really cool about the Murphyverse, I think. Um, is that the Batman the White Knight was absolutely incredible and mm -hmm. it was, you know, like you said, an Eisner Award winning. And um, but then what he's done after that hasn't exactly like normally if you get a sequel, it normally kind of taints the first one, it's not as good or it's it's just not quite there. But I found with all his books, they massively enhanced the first book, whether you like the second book or not, or whether you like Von Fries or not, or whether you like Harley Quinn, or whether you like the new one that's currently out. It doesn't matter because the stories that are in them just reinforce how good the first one is. Yeah. Because you you can go back and reread the first one, be like, oh, that makes sense now in the in this yeah. one that I'm currently reading. <laughs> it's very clever. It's like I think it's called longevity writing. Yeah. He's obviously got an end goal, but he knows where he's going. And I think the fact that he, he literally is creating a a universe mm -hmm. because we're not just seeing Batman, we're seeing Batman, we're seeing Harley Quinn, we're seeing uh, we're seeing Red Hood, we're seeing Von Freeze, we're seeing Nightwing, we're seeing Robin, Catwoman, e everything. There's so many elements that are coming into this, um, which leads us on to October 2020, which was Batman White Knight presents Harley Quinn. This was six issues. Now, this, uh, we were lucky enough to have Katana Collins, who is Sean Murphy's wife. Now, she wrote this. This was her first ever DC comic that she wrote. Now, she was the writer for this. Now, you guys can help me out on this. She was the writer for it. But Sean Murphy did the story. How and, and Matteo Scalera did the artwork and, and everything on this. How does that work? Like what's the difference between the writing and the story? So I would assume that Sean Murphy's written the universe mm -hmm. and uh, Katana Collins is writing within uh, Sean Murphy's story. So Sean Murphy's written the overall story of the whole universe mm -hmm. and Katana Collins is writing a, a part of that universe. That's what yeah. I would assume that means. Yeah. I might be wrong, but that kind of seems like a safe assumption. Can I just ask a quick question? Like totally deviate slightly, but you know, when the first issue of Batman Curse of White Knight came out mm -hmm. now, I might be wrong and I might be overstepping the mark slightly, but I'm pretty sure that Batman, the Curse of White Knight issue one outsold the ongoing batman comic that month because wow. people wanted more of the unit of the murphy verse mm -hmm. than they did of the ongoing dc batman universe and that just says everything i know that's a hype thing so everyone's jumped on the hype bandwagon like oh i don't want to miss the first issue of curse of the white knight but that just says everything to me that the current run of batman is just a little bit naff mm -hmm. As Bat Dan Dixon said here, didn't Murphy say his universe was a sort of adult continuation of 90s animated Batman series? Now that you said that you can 100% see that, this is, like, I think I want to get across is that this is a Batman universe that I would love to read on a regular basis. Mm. Like, if this, if this was pumped out as much as the normal Batman is... I would be all for this. Like these are fantastic. Like even obviously where we've had the one shots of um, of Red Hood, Von Freeze, and even Harley Quinn with six issues. I think you're right on that. I think Sean Murphy's created this. He's created the Murphy verse, and he's got his wife to write the story, which fits into that. Because how this issue ends, how the sixth issue ends in Harley Quinn, it follows on to Batman Beyond the White Knight. Because then so we kind good. of we, then we kind of get into building of like Batman's falling in love with uh, Harley Quinn. They've married, and then it kind of we find out that Jack Napier, aka the White Knight, aka the Joker, is in Batman's psyche, and he's kind of telling him what to do. And Batman's fighting, and again, it touches on mental health and stuff. Which Beyond the White Knight was released March uh, 22, which was last year, and this is again was, was eight issues. 
this doesn't seem to be letting up anytime soon. Like this whole white knight ethos and the Murphy verse is fantastic. Like I'm loving it. And I know Andy, you're not really a massive fan of Batman, but I kind of know that you, you love this, this Murphy verse and what, what Sean Murphy's created. I, I love Batman. I don't know. Don't know where you got that from. Um, I, it's I not James that, from Comic Deal. Yeah, I'm, I'm the other bald guy. Oh yeah, that's uh, the other one. Yeah, that's the other one. Um, no, I, I absolutely love Batman. Um, I think you, you were saying, oh, you'd like this every week. Mm-hmm. I actually wouldn't like the Murphy verse every week. I think the beauty of it is, is that we get self-contained stories where you get a start and a finish, but you know that it's all part of that bigger uh, mm-hmm. multiverse, as it were. As it were. Um, so I think that's the beauty of it. Um, but yeah, again, I, I just reiterate, guys. Like, there is more to Sean, Sean Murphy than 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 the White Knight. Um, but if you haven't read this, then you are definitely missing out because see, when you read this and you go back to read other Batman books, mm-hmm. especially the, yeah. the run that's happening at the minute, you'll just realise the, the the complete difference in, in the storytelling. I mean, for instance, the the Batman Curse of the White Knight is obviously his Batman battling Azrael. Like them two characters coming together is 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 amazing, and like you, you kind of get the whole backstory of, of Bruce Wayne and everything here, and like Knights of the Round Table and the Knights Templar and stuff like that is sensational. And to fit in that into a Batman universe is something that is fucking so cool. Like it's so cool. And uh, you, you asked the question about like what's the difference between writing the story and the overall mm-hmm. thing. Um, my understanding of this, and again, I could be wrong, but I, I believe that Sean, for that particular run, done the storyboarding, and then okay. the writing was based off those storyboards, but then there was a different person who actually done the artwork in the comic. Right, well, okay. Yeah, that, sound, that's, that does sound about right. Triple G said, the DC cartoon movie of White Knight would be very cool. I think it would, and I think the whole thing that really grabbed everyone's attention was... How this flipped on his head, how Joker became like the White Knight, the savior and stuff. And it was Batman that was dealing with like depression and mental health issues and, and becoming like an obsessive and stuff. Because I think when you look at Batman like that as a character, he is quite dark, he is quite deceiving, he is quite oppressed. And for it to be in comic book form, instead of seeing Batman as the savior that saves Gotham day in, day out, having the Joker as that and the Batman as the villain. It was interesting. You weren't you weren't expecting it because you think, oh, Batman is DC. He he's the, he's the savior of Gotham, and to see it like that, I think it was it was great to have it like that. To be able to turn it on his head and read a comic where it's not going to pan out as you expected. Then we come on to August twenty twenty two. So another one shot. This is Batman White Knight presents Red Hood. This was two issues. I wanted more from this. I I would have at least liked to see another. I don't know, another, another one or two issues, because I, I really enjoyed it. I like Red Hood as a character, um, and I, I thought I thought it was really, really good. Did you? Did either one of you guys read this? Yeah, I read it. Yeah, I, I don't think there was good. much Red Hood, was there, no, Tom? No. Wasn't, no, it was no, more about the new Red Hood yeah, slash Robin, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, it was about him training her up. I thought it was filler. And, and stuff, <laughs> yeah. Um, I love what Batman did. There we go. I love Murphy's Milfy Harley look. If... Like that's that's a Harley story I want to get into. Like Murphy's Murphy's Milfy <laughs> Murphy's Milfy verse Milfy Harley is, is something I'd like to get into. So if, yeah, if you can if you want to hashtag that, that's a that's all good for that. And then finally we come to uh, the latest installment, which is May 2023. This was when it was released. Batman White Knight presents Generation Joker issue number six. So obviously if you've been following the whole uh, Batman White Knight, you will know that the the character on the front is Joker's daughter. And this is kind of the generation Joker. She's kind of playing with good versus evil. Does she want to be like her father, Jack Napier? Or does she want to grow up like her uncle, uh, uh, Bruce Wayne? And it's kind of like the uh, the good versus evil. But this is a fantastic story. And I know GP in the chat has, has been reading this, but this is good. Like, this is really, really good. I'm, I'm very much enjoying this. And again, Katana Collins, she, she's back on it for for another for another swing at the bat of a uh, of writing a Batman story, which is great. I'm I'm loving this. Are you guys, Tom? Have you read this? Andy, you got this on the stack, haven't you? I've yeah, I've reading. got them stacked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been kind of, enjoying this to be fair. Yeah. So that kind of uh, brings us to the end of it. But so obviously we we've touched on like his artwork and stuff like that. But this is this is costly. 
this these are very very costly so obviously these are the original pieces that you can find over on um sean gordon murphy art.com and the generation joker issue number one cover a does anyone want to take a guess of what that's going for a grand 50 50 grand it's going for eight thousand dollars nice it's not bad eight thousand dollars it's it's, it's, it's it's cheaper than a j scott campbell it is so this Alice Ever After, this is, it. I'll tell you what, if I had the money available right now, I'd be snapping this up. Well, I forgot how much this is, is on there for, but I bet it's a few, Bob. I mean, it's, it's amazing. You can, this is what he does at the end of his comics. He has screen grabs of these, of, of what's coming in the next issue. But these are fantastic. And then obviously Batman Beyond the White Knight, issue number two, cover A. These are sensational. And you can understand why he does what he does because this is great i absolutely love this yeah just reiterates what i was saying earlier that i don't think you get a full appreciation yeah, of the skills uh, until you strip away the colors and everything the post sort of production that you see on the on the comic and yeah. it doesn't need it back color does it really some of no. them don't need color no but he's, he's also got some color work on there i think he's, he's got one of um Harley Quinn, Joker, Batman. I think he's got like a Wonder Woman on there. Uh, he's done some various pieces. He's done. He's got some uh, storyboards on there of like the Batman of how it's panning out in in Batman White Knight and stuff like that. But some of them are in incredible, absolutely this is amazing. Thirteen thousand for the Alice Ever After one. Thirteen grand. Wow. Thirteen thousand pounds. That's that's pretty. But yeah, if you head over to, I think it's Sean Gould and Murphy Art, uh, you can click on his Twitter handle, it'll take you over to there and you can see some of the fantastic pieces that he's got. Um, and I can only ever wish to own to own one of these. I think I'll have to do a print and a poster uh, in, in, in an Ikea frame uh, <laughs> and live it that way. Um, and then, obviously, uh, upcoming now, so that's, that's the Murphy verse is not done. By the way, the Murphy verse is not done. Uh, there's there's planned. I think Catwoman is planned later next year, and then I think they're going to delve into uh, Batman Beyond the White Knight. I think it's going to be like a volume two of that, and they're going to be touching on different character developments and stuff like that. But this is obviously potholes. Um, this is two issues, so I got confused about this, Andy. So I put this in, and then the slides that I sent through, I took out, and I know why I took it out because maybe League of Comic Books is wrong again. Um, but this was released as a hardback last year, or, or, or so it says. I don't know if you can clear yeah. that up. So it's getting released by oh, okay. uh, uh, what not? What not? Massoff, yeah. yeah. Who are now what not? Yeah, mm -hmm. what not? Who are now Massoff? So, but yeah, that's what that's what confused me. And obviously, this is the dream team of uh, Sean, Sean Murphy's writing it, and uh, colorist is Matt Hollingsworth, who did the original uh, Batman White Knight. And basically, plot holes are a square of fictional warriors, what, warriors, warriors who transport themselves into pages of other books, using their unique skills to save the plots in order to stop them from being destroyed. And Cliff is the newest recruit, a new comic creator who's just realised that his world isn't real. In fact, it's a complete fiction that literally exists inside a novel. How amazing does that sound? It's a comic book inside a comic book where the main character is living in a comic book that he's not even part of. I'm so excited. I buy Barry and Tiger Man. I mean that I'm literally sold. <laughs> and and the thing is, if you look at if you look at the face of uh, of Cliff here and go back to Joe the Barbarian and then go back to um, Punk Rock Jesus, you can you can see similarities. You can see where he's kind of building the characters from. He's taking elements of that to build into this. Uh, the other members are misfits like him, pulled from unpublished books that couldn't be saved. A manga samurai, a barbarian tiger, a kid from a comic strip, and a vampire assassin. Outclassed by the other members, Cliff sets out to prove his worth to the plot holes as they fight to save as many books as possible. I, for one, am definitely picking this up. Not yes. sure about you guys, but this is going to be amazing. That looks like a self-portrait of uh, Sean Murphy. Well, you say that. So on his Instagram, he done. Uh, he's uh, it, there's a picture of him, and he's uh, he's like a he's dressed up as like El Toro, and um, and he's posing like that, and he's saying gaining inspiration. And what he's done is taken the picture of that, and then he's kind of drawn Zorro as that. So you can kind of see where he gets his inspiration from. 
Um, but yeah, if you head over Instagram and stuff like that, you can see that and you can see the line drawings of this over on SeanMurphyArt.com as well. So that's what's next. And then obviously, if you do want to see more, you can head over to Sean Gordon Murphy on Instagram and then Sean Gordon Murphy Art on Twitter. And then this is some of the stuff that he's got coming up. And then there's the Zorro one there. You've got everything else. Um, but yeah, I uh, and, and I've got to tell you this, right? So this image here of Sean Murphy... There was no sides to this image, right? It was literally, this is, this is, I thought I tried this out. There was no sides to this image. So if you look at the image, you can just see where the, the buckle of the collar ends. That's where the image ended, right? So what I did, I put this image into the new Photoshop AI app, right? Dropped it in. And where you go to clip, you clip half of the picture and off the page as well. And AI created the rest of that picture. Wow. Like, honestly, my mind was blown when he did that because I was kind of like, how have they created that? And I just thought... So you, you could have created any particular predicament for Sean Murphy? Is that what yes. you're saying? Yeah. Nice. But how, how I make... Like, I just want to put that out there because that looks like an image that was taken. But this yeah. is this is the way that we're going. But, yeah, if you if you do want to see more, head over to Sean Gordon Murphy. Do you any more? Like, are we AI? Like, is this, this, is, happening right now? this is it this is it who knows but um yeah that was my uh sean murphy uh universe i hope it was informative i hope you guys in the chat managed to uh pick up on some bits that you kind of didn't that was know quality of. mate um i for one when i was looking at it when i found out he did batman scarecrow i was kind of taken aback because i was like you tom i was like i swear he only ever did this batman thing but i think where it was so many years ago and it was done in the uh, Batman continuation of the original comics and stuff like that. I don't think a lot of people would have put their thoughts behind it, thinking it was Sean Murphy, but it was. So if you do get a chance to, to go back in and, and read it, give it a go. So yeah, I hope it was hope it was good for everyone. So now, now we get to right. I've had my fun. I can just sit back and and moan about not winning again. So who, who's going to do the honors this week? Uh, I can. Do it if you want. Miss no skin off my life, mate. I won. <laughs> Has it end? I don't know. I've clicked end. Has it ended? It should have done. Can you see it, Andy? Uh, yeah. Uh, so in last place is Charlie on 21%. Uh, <laughs> 21%. In, in joint first place or second place, depending on how you want to look at it, is myself and you, Tom, with 39% Ooh, each. Split decision. How, how my cover never won this week, I will never know. It's an absolute travesty. And I want Which to cover did you go for? for? The Harley Quinn, one in 25, so is my car. Ah, okay. Come on now. Guys, what's coming if I, if I was to, If I was to, uh, if I was, if I'd have done a vote, I would have voted for that one. So. Oh, thanks, mate. But oh, well, do like, you know what? It's the taking part that counts. That's absolute shit. It's the winning. Everyone wants to win. <laughs> And unfortunately, no, no one won this week. So I guess we're I guess we're all even. We are we're all but, even, aren't we? No, we, we no, are. no. What, <laughs> we, we put we put half half an issue on each of us. So one half an half. Just put one on each. <laughs> yeah, just just put one on each. But yeah, nice no, fun. Uh, yeah, great comics, great covers, guys. Thanks for everyone that voted. So obviously, you can do the usual. You can do the usual housekeeping. You can follow me over at Instagram.com forward slash Geeky Guy Comics, and then Twitter uh, is Geeky Guy Comics. No. Oh, okay, I'll do it. Uh, oh, Instagram. You froze, mate. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Well, I just said, I thought you froze. I just went was into that, AI, mate. I thought that was the AI had uh, come and attacked Charlie there. What, what, what happened? <laughs> and then you can follow uh, Perpetual at uh, Perpetual.comics and then over on Twitter is Perpetual Comics. And then Tom, you've got Not Quite Mint and then you've also got Tom Mailing underscore PT, haven't you as well, mate? Absolutely, mate. Perfect. And then you can follow us if you're not doing so already, the Killer Comic Show over on Instagram and then Killer Comic Show on Twitter. We're picking up quite a few followers now, so the traction is definitely there. I think uh, if uh, speaking from the time and effort that we do put behind to put our stuff on social, um, we do enjoy doing it. And it is pretty, it is, I would say it's visually attractive. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to go out there and say, yeah, visually attractive. Our Instagram account is, is something that we should all be proud of. So thank you to everyone that 
pays attention to all the posts we put up. Thank you to Buffer for putting things out on time. And uh, thank you to each and every one of you in the chat that, that take your time to like interact with the uh, the socials that we put out and stuff. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, there we go. The Killer Comic Show sneak peek for next week. So we've got, as always, we've got three amazing comics. Um, I've gone for, I think I went for, Harley Quinn issue number one. Had to go for that. Black, white and redder. Andy? It's terrible. Um, <laughs> it's it's terrible. absolutely terrible. I'll um, be voting for that one then. I went for The Ribbon Queen, which we looked at just a few moments ago by Garth Ennis. EW Upshot. Uh, I've gone for Big Game by Mark Miller, which Andy brought to my attention last week. I'm looking forward to this because this is basically, it's, it's not even publicised as Image or Skybound. It's basically been publicised as Miller World. Yeah. Which is, it's, it's not just called Big Game for a reason. Do you know that? I think this is going to, I think this is going to be the year of Mark Miller, if I'm being honest. I think there's, there's a lot coming. And I think it's going to be an exciting time. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading these three. These three will be going up shortly after the show. So if you want to place your votes over in the community tab. And then we will see what comic we are reading next week. Before we go over to the pickups, uh, Tom, just a wee shout out to Tom on the PT page. He's posting relentlessly motivational stuff. I'm too fat and lazy to be motivated. But if I was going to be, it would be by that stuff. Look at that, Tom. Oh. Appreciate yeah, that, Chris. Thank you very it, much, mate. Even even the self-proclaimed fat old bastards are, are taking note of your stuff. And I think it's oh, all thanks. because of your little sausage. I, I yeah, probably. I mean, if you get your wiener out in public, people will look. <laughs> but but there we go. Another fantastic show. Guys, thank you for letting me take the time to uh, to mull over and, and gush over um, Sean Gould and Murphy. And for anyone in the chat, this is the time where we can kind of sit back now because uh, Andy's probably got... 20 minutes worth of pickups. I've got a few that I'm really excited to show off. Tom, have you got anything? Unfortunately not. I've got some stuff in the pipeline, though. There we go. So, Andy, do you want to take it away or do you want me to get mine out of the way so you can just have all the time to yourself? No, go for it. You go for yours. Right, perfect. So, I was out today up in London. I had a little meeting and I popped into Gosh Comics, which is in Soho. And I managed to pick up uh, the Art Germ foil variant cover. Which nice. is quite nice. And then I also managed to pick up, after reading it, I have to say, absolutely blown away by it. Absolutely loved it. I managed to pick up the, this one, the foil, I think it's called the foil indent, one in 10, cover D by Jenny Frisson of Sirens of the City. Oh, fuck. That's cool. That's like, oh, I like that. That's nice. This was, it was six pound. That's it. It was six pound in Gosh Comics, and what got, I've, got, I've got to say to anyone, right? And you can see the foil indent. It's just like you see it there, like the foil indent, just on oh, like yeah. certain, certain parts. What I have to say about Gosh Comics, so they're quite good, right? So they will, as you walk in, you go downstairs above the door. Ed Vic will know this because he goes there as well. Above the door on the left hand side, as you go downstairs, they will have like five or six variants. They're the one in, they're, I think they're like the one in tens, the one in twenty fives, and the one in fifties that they have. And you can first come first serve, you get it, and you, you take it upstairs to be sold. But what they also do as well, behind the enormous amount of comics that they have on the shelves, if you go to the back of that comic, you will find like a one in ten or a, or a one in one in five and stuff. With this one, at the back of the comic, there were seven comics. I scrolled all the way to the back of it. And there was this one. And apparently, before I got there, I think uh, yesterday or last week when this came out, there was a black and white version of this. And I th is it a 1 in 25, I think it is? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I was standing in there and the guy said to me, he said, if you've been in last week, they had two of them that they didn't put out. They left them at the back of the thing and you could have picked up a 1 in 25 for £6 because they wouldn't have nah. made it up. But I'm I'm very happy with these. I'm very I'm very very happy with these. I like the fact, and it's an amazing story as well. And it's another a Jenny Frisson cover to add to my collection. I haven't got any of you, Andy, but yes, very nice. So yes, Andy. Um, I was going to say, mine's is very jock heavy. You said jock, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's start with the non-jock, I guess. Uh, so I, I won this on Whatnot. Uh, it's a, a Ryan Brown cover from Morbius, The Living Vampire, issue number two. Oh, so nice. That was a little Morbius. Whatnot giveaway that, that I entered and, and managed oh, to nice. pick that up. So delighted with that. Um, 
I picked up some Alex Ross books because they were going cheap. So I picked up this one. And there's a second one here. Uh, the Black Panther one, which is... Oh, nice, this. nice. Um, a little bit of Sosa Mica action for Catwoman issue number 49. That's such a great cover. That is really such is. a great cover. Yeah, it's um, a cover, to be fair. Fantastic. I, I love the background on it. It's about the, 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 the ha-has in the background. Is, that, really is, is any of that foil? No, no, none of it's foil. It's just uh, black and white. Skill. Is that quite an old? Is that quite an old issue? Or no, forty nine. I think that's quite recent, fairly recent. Because I know yeah, Susan Mike have done like four or five issues. Yeah, of yeah, it. yeah, that's wicked. Yeah, a yeah. um, little bit of uh, Scott, Scott Young, Young action. Nice. Um, if he if he's going to be a thought bubble, like I think you you mentioned, that's that's a highlight. Like the, the, that's going to be incredible. The only thing is, I think I, th yes. I think it was either you. Phil or uh, Peter mentioned that the amount of people that are going to show up with long boxes and long boxes of Scotty Young stuff to be signed. Like you're probably that's one of them, Andy. That's just us. <laughs> yeah, what about everybody else? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, got a little bit of G. Scott Campbell action. Oh, Campbell's issue number one. Um, then this is an interesting one. Um, this is uh, Soulfire. And this was a, a limited edition run that Michael Turner uh, produced. Oh, nice. Yeah, you'll see here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, get a little ding and bent the top corner. But hey ho, um, uh, you'll like this one. Uh, David Nakayama, uh, some Wonder Woman issue number seven nine five. Yeah, the thick five one. Yeah, I love that. Great cover. Uh, a little bit of Jenny Frisson, Seven Secrets. Just to add to the collection. Uh, Did you ever read Seven Secrets? I got four or five issues and got a bit bored of it. <laughs> to be yeah, honest, right. yeah. Scott um, Shelf, Scott Shelf. He, um, I think he, I think he three D modelled. He had the seven secret, the seven briefcases. Yeah, the yeah. yeah, they they were pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, G. Scott Campbell again. Luke Cage. Luke Cage, nice. Uh, and this is the the jock side of things. So this is Spawn two fifty. Uh. So this this came as this regular cover, and then there was a second print of it, which is just grayscale. Um, there's also a great Sean Gordon Murphy cover for issue two fifty of Spawn that you should definitely go check out. But happy enough to pick it up. I've got a couple of issues of this, but it was so cheap I just had to pick it up. Um, got some slabs, boys, that I got from Stackery. Um, so the first couple were picked up. A because of a joke and B because of the the limited edition what mm -hmm. you call it, label. Yeah. Um, and I thought this looked really cool with the label. Yeah, that looks uh, wicked. So this is Venom two hundred. It's one of those you know thick boys. Yeah. Uh, cool like that. And it, and it moves. It actually moves in the case. I can hear it moving. Because oh, sure. um, the the quality of case is great for these big boys. But I just love the way that it sort of presented with the yeah, label yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So. That's that. Um, two more to go. Um, so this was one that I've been hunting for quite some time. Uh, this is a, a limited edition label oh, that nice. CGC done. And I think it was like one per store. I might have made that up. But it, it was quite difficult to get this, this Batman label here. That's cool. Um, yeah. So what does it say, actually? Uh, yeah, it just says um, DC certified label for All-Star Batman. And obviously, you've got your your jock yeah. um, cover there. They don't do Batman um, labels anymore, do they? they? Don't do DC labels at all. Don't do DC at all. No. Yeah, I think that was just like a one off for that for that particular comic. So, um, and then this one, this this is this is a hard boy to get. Uh, this is GI Joe, a real American hero, issue two seven five. Uh, this was a Torpedo Comics uh, exclusive. Hmm. That's nice. That's a, that's Jock that done that cover. You would know. I I would have never really knew that that was a Jock no. cover. So this that's is a trade right? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh. Um. So yeah, Larry Hammer uh, story, and this came as a trade, and you can also get this as a Virgin variant, uh, and obviously it's signed there as well. So yeah, that's what kind of pick it up for the collection, and and that's all my pickups, boys. Oh, look at that! That is. That was, 
when you when you get your stuff from stack round do you is there is there like certain suppliers that you, you buy from or are they from ebay in the states or everything everything everywhere either ebay my comic shop in america mid town comics um yeah anywhere I, I tend to go less about going to shops and just Google yeah. what I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, and it normally directs me to the, when I need to go. Yeah. yeah. But there, that's it. There we go. That's another Thursday done. It's good to be back. Uh, you two actually ruled the rouge last week's fantastic show. Um, thanks to every single person, again, that joins us every single Thursday, that interacts with the chat, interacts with the videos, interacts with our socials. Um, I've said it time and time again, this show wouldn't be anything without you two and also more importantly wouldn't be anything without you guys in the chat um so thank you for investing your time week in week out i think we're coming up to probably four years or three years of the killer comic show now so it's literally a long running show uh and, mm. and take it from me i ain't going to be stopping anytime soon uh, i think i speak for all three of us we enjoy doing it and uh we look forward to seeing you uh again same time same place next thursday and um there's, there's, there is a saying that we say, but I, I can't remember it. Hmm. Hmm. Like and stay safe. Stay sexy. Have a good weekend, See everyone. You. Enjoy what you're reading. See you later.